Hi, I'm Matthew Feichert. I'm a particle physicist, and I'm a postdoc at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign, where I work on the ATLAS experiment, as well as for the Institute for Research and Innovation in Software for High Energy Physics. And today I'll be talking to you about PyHF, which is a pure Python statistical fitting library from the high energy physics community that leverages both tensor library backends as well as automatic differentiation. Okay, so before we go any further, I first want to take this opportunity to introduce the PyHF core development team. So we're Lucas Heinrich, uh, who is a postdoc at CERN. Uh, I reintroduce myself. I'm Matthew Feichert, a postdoc at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, and then also Jordan Stark, who is a postdoc at the University of California, Santa Cruz. We're all experimental high energy particle physicists that work together on an experimental collaboration with 3000 of our closest colleagues called ATLAS that's located just outside of beautiful Geneva, Switzerland at CERN's Large Hadron Collider, the LHC. Here you can see the obligatory picture of the LHC's huge 27 kilometer circumference drawn over the Swiss French countryside with markers ind indicating where the main experiments reside along the rain about 100 meters below ground. Uh, and our collaboration is formed around the Atlas detector itself, uh, seen here with a T-Rex for scale, uh, which you can think of as a cathedral-sized digital camera for recording the events of colliding beams of protons from the LHC at almost the speed of light for us to then later analyze. The reason that we're smashing protons together at extreme energy densities and looking at the splattered remains in our detector is because we want to understand the fundamental forces of the universe like electromagnetism and the strong and weak nuclear forces, and their interactions with the most elementary particles of matter. With a long history of success, we've been able to distill down what we know about the universe so far, so that with a little bit of manipulation, you can fit it in one equation on the side of a coffee cup, but we know that's not the full picture. We're still trying to understand some of the physics we do know about, like the Higgs boson we found in 2012, as well as see if we can find evidence for new physics like dark matter. So we're trying to ask the universe pretty fundamental questions about what it is, but the universe isn't interested in answering them too easily. We have to run our colliders for years at a time, producing millions of collisions per second to try and collect as much high quality data as possible on the rare events that can give us a glimpse as to the missing parts of our picture. When we do analyze all that data, we're looking to extract as much information as possible out of it. We're using it to search for new physics, like when we discovered a particle that was consistent with the theoretical predictions of the Higgs boson in 2012. But we're also using it to make precision measurements of the physics we do know about to better understand its properties. So that when we don't find evidence of new physics on our searches, we can still provide the best limit constraints on different possible theories. All of this requires building statistical models and then fitting those models to the data to perform statistical inference. However, the model complexity for some of these analyses can be huge, resulting in the time to perform these fits being many hours. This is obviously a problem, and we want to try and empower analysts, which are ourselves, with fast fits and expressive models so that we can decrease the time to inference and insight. We turn now to His Factory, one of the most extensively used statistical models in all of high energy physics. This flexible probability density function template was first developed in the field as part of the efforts in the search for the Higgs boson. Since the discovery of the Higgs, it's gone on to be used ubiquitously in both measurements of known physics processes, that is physics that is described by what we call the standard model, as well as searches for new physics, which we refer to as being beyond the standard model. When we break down what the His factory template is though, we see it has a simple form. Though here we do need to introduce some terminology, the terms channel and sample. Here a channel just means a particular selection criteria for the analysis. If you allow me to simplify to avoid giving an aside lightning talk on the standard model, this might mean requiring seeing two particles of one type and a third of another in the detector and that their combined energy lies within a specific range. So in the plot below, we see that each bin is a different analysis region, a different channel. Uh, here, there's just one bin in each channel, but that's just this particular example. There are analyses in which channels contain many bins. So following that, a sample corresponds to a particular physics process that could result in producing particles that would get selected for a particular channel. So each of these colored histograms in the histogram stacks in each bin corresponds to a different sample. So as you can see, some samples, physics processes, 
show up in different channels. OK, given this aside, we can backtrack to see that the his factory template is just comprised of a main part in blue, which is the product of Poisson distributions across all bins and all channels, where the event rate parameter for the Poisson is determined from a nominal event rate that is affected by different multiplicative and additive modifiers in each sample. The reason for using Poisson's is that we're doing kind experiments for subatomic processes that are inherently random. The second part, in red, is comprised of constraint PDFs that allow for different auxiliary measurements to constrain the overall model and encode different systematic uncertainties from the physics theory and the detector responses. So in this example plot, the samples could share a systematic uncertainty in the normalization, in addition to other modifiers. This gives us a mathematical grammar to set up a simultaneous fit for multiple channels, regions, each with multiple bins and multiple samples, processes, that are all coupled to a set of constraints. But the important part is that this is just mathematics. No software specification is defined anywhere, but until very recently in 2018, the only implementation that existed of his factory was in the monolithic C++ library called root that has been the computational backbone of experimental high energy physics for almost 25 years. The change was the creation of PyHF the first pure Python implementation of his factory, which, as you can see below, is just a pip install away on PyPI and openly developed on GitHub. OK, now that we've hopefully motivated the existence of PyHF and the his factory formalism, let's dive into the PyHF API a bit. The basic object that is at the heart of everything is, unsurprisingly, the model. However, what we're interested in doing with the model is going to be maximum likelihood fits. So we'll be dealing a lot with the log PDF as we want to get the log likelihood of the model parameters conditioned on the observed data. In this minimal simple example, using just two bins and a single channel, we see that we can create a simplistic model quickly. And then with the data from our uh, experimental observations and the model auxiliary constraints, we can get the log likelihood of the default initialization parameters of the model. If we look at how this model is actually being represented internally, though, we see that it is a directed computational graph that shows the full formalism of his factory. Each node of the graph represents a vectorized n-dimensional array, or as we'll call it, tensor operation. You can see from these color nodes that the data and the model parameters enter at different points and are additionally largely factorized uh, into subgraphs. These parameter and data graphs combine again at the bottom of the graph to be used in the computation of the final log likelihood. OK, we can now turn our attention to the core task of performing maximum likelihood fits with PyHF. Here, we want to minimize the objective function, which is twice the negative log likelihood, as minimizing the negative log likelihood will result in maximizing the likelihood. We can see that the PyHF API for this is pretty transparent. And looking at the same minimal example as before, we see that performing the maximum likelihood fit with our optional return fitted val keyword argument returns the maximum likelihood estimate of the model parameters, as well as minus two times the log likelihood at these best fit parameters. Additionally, we can see in these final steps that we perform a demonstration check of that explicitly. We're now going to use our tools to get to what we really care about, performing a profile likelihood fit for our parameter of interest mu. Here we profile out the nuisance parameters theta by expressing the nuisance parameters as functions of the parameter of interest itself. So from a physics standpoint, the parameter of interest is typically the normalization factor on the count of the new physics process we're searching for. And since we're searching for it, we call it the signal. And the standard model physics, we call it the background. So we would call this particular parameter of interest the signal strength. OK, so anyway, so what we want to do for this profile likelihood fit is on the top line perform a constrained best fit for a given signal strength value mu that we're testing to get the best fit nuisance parameters given this test value, and then compare that res result to the unconstrained best fit on the bottom, where all the model parameters are free parameters in the fit. So we're doing a hypothesis test for the production rate of our, of our new physics. So we can then take this result as a test statistic and calculate a modified p-value that we call the CLS using either results from asymptotic distributions or generating pseudo-experiments. And this is all to ask, 
given our model and the data, did we discover new physics? And we want to do all of this as fast as possible. And that's a lot, but PyHF provides a hypothesis test API. And so continuing in our minimal example, we see that performing the hypothesis test for a signal strength that would be consistent with theory predictions, one, and our return expected set uh, keyword argument, we get back uh, both uh, the observed modified p-values as well as a band of variations from the expected result if there is no new physics. This is exactly what we need. As the serialization of the likelihood had previously been in a domain-specific binary format that provided some difficulties for analysis reinterpretation, we gave a lot of thought to how PyHF should do things. This resulted in the decision to create a JSON schema that would allow for a declarative specification of the His factory model. On the right, we see a short working example of the JSON spec for a single channel two bin counting experiment with a systematic uncertainty. Ignoring, of course, the highlighted comments, which I put in by hand and are obviously invalid JSON. Okay, so given our coverage of the His factory formalism, we see that we have a list of channels uh, within a with a list of samples, with an associated list of rate factors and systematic uncertainties, as well as the observed data, our declared parameter of interest, and the schema version. So all of his factor is represented here, so we have a declarative full serialization of the likelihood. JSON provides us many advantages. It is both human and machine readable, making it mentally much easier to deal with, Additionally, JSON is an industry standard and will probably be with us until the heat death of the universe. So we have long, long-term support baked in. In the same vein, it is parsable in pretty much every language. So if alternative implementations exist, our models can be easily ported. Finally, given the large cost of running the LHC and building experimental detectors the size of buildings, we want to try and reuse analyses as much as possible in the future. JSON is plain text and so versionable, easily preserved, and highly compressible, making it a great choice. Another great thing about using JSON is that we then also get JSON patch, which allows us to easily mutate our models. If we take the example JSON spec we just looked at and use the PyHF command line API to perform a CLS computation, we get an observed value given the background of signal models considered. We can call this using signal model A. If we want to now test some new physics model, we can call that signal model B, that would have different contributions, then we can use JSON patch to patch in this new signal on the fly and recompute our result. So we now see that the observed modified p-value, the observed CLS, that we get for this new patched in signal model is different from the original signal model result. In a typical physics analysis, we additionally want to evaluate signal hypotheses for a range of possible particle masses, which results in hundreds of points in our parameter space to evaluate. The choice of JSON allows for us to further simplify things by breaking out the background only model JSON into one file and then creating a patch set file that contains all of the signal model JSON patches inside of it. These two JSON files, along with the PyHF schema, fully preserve the analysis likelihood, making it reusable by both theorists and experimentalists alike. These full likelihoods can then be publicly published to HEPData, a repository for data associated with particle physics results, which will even mint a DOI for these data products as well. When validating that the results obtained with PyHF were consistent with the results from the C++ library, we saw excellent agreement. On the right plot, made with matplotlib, there are actually multiple contours overlaid, not just one with cross-hatching. But the agreement between the C++ results and PyHF is so good, it's very difficult to see any deviations. As an additional really nice aspect, when we computed all the points required to construct this contour, PyHF was able to do so significantly faster, taking minutes as compared to hours. The publication of the full likelihoods to HEP data using the PyHF schema has an additional distinction of solving a nearly 20-year-old problem in the field of particle physics. At a workshop in 2000, whose proceedings the quotes here are taken from, there was agreement in the community that the LHC experiments should publish their likelihoods as part of the results. However, the technical aspect of what exactly to publish and how are non-trivial. By focusing on just his factory models, given their extensive use and popularity, 
We were able to make good on this agreement when in the when in 2019 the Atlas collaboration published to HEPData the likelihoods for a search for bottom squark pair production in final states containing Higgs bosons, B jets, and missing transverse momentum. The speedups we observed with PyHF on a single machine can be further improved by parallelizing the fits of all the signal hypotheses. Here we see a GIF on the right of a Jupyter notebook that is sending out fits of the models for all the signal hypotheses to run on 25 worker nodes in the cloud, and then updating the exclusion contour plot in real time as those fit results come back in. As the different fits are independent of each other, the patch back, background, and signal models can be sent out to worker nodes on demand, taking advantage of the scaling to make quick work of this embarrassingly parallelizable problem. Through this weak parallelism, the same contour plot we just saw can be fully reproduced in just three minutes. This clearly motivates the idea of fitting as, as a service on clusters in the future. The reason for PyHS performance comes from the choice to use tensor algebra libraries as our computational backends. Our default backend, as you may have noticed from the example so far, is NumPy, with SciPy providing the optimizer. We additionally also support PyTorch, TensorFlow, and JAX as computational backends with full feature parity. One of the motivations for choosing machine learning frameworks as backends is to exploit automatic differentiation of their computational graphs and the hardware acceleration on GPUs that they are designed to work with to speed up fits. As can be seen here in the lower left plot, in this preliminary study of the effects of hardware acceleration on PyHF fit times for admittedly somewhat unrealistic models, we see that as the model complexity grows, there are significant gains in the speedups provided by GPUs, in some cases, even in order of magnitude. This has allowed for some real models to move from being fit in hours to minutes and minutes to seconds, turning overnight jobs into nearly interactive analyses, or at least an, an excuse to go for a coffee. Additionally, while we'd like to think good things about ourselves, physicists are not professional software engineers, nor the incredible NumPy and SciPy dev teams. We're physicists. So being able to build on top of the hard work of the professionals that build these open source libraries is hugely empowering. What PyHF provides is a unified API to our computational backends through our TensorLib shim. You can see here for our four supported backends, the code needed for PyHF to provide a normal distribution object through our TensorLib normal dist API, without the analyst ever needing to care which backend they've chosen to use. This additionally allows for transparently changing the backend with our set backend API. In this example, we see that using PyHF's API, we are able to build two normal distributions and then evaluate their log PDF for particular observation values in the native tensor representation of each backend, all of course giving consistent values. Additionally, for the tensor library backends that provide automatic differentiation, we gain access to the full gradient of the likelihood, resulting in our accuracy being limited by floating point precision. We can exploit the full gradient by providing it to the modern optimizers our backends provide to help speed up the fit. It is also worth point pointing out that this is made possible by the fact that the backends are constructing computational graphs of our model, as we saw before, and then applying the chain rule to the tensorized operations in these graphs to move the gradients through the graphs along with the data. The benefits that are received from these tensorized representations are not to be understated. The ability to represent the His factory models in this graph visually alone is impressive. When, for comparison, this is the graph of the model used in the Higgs discovery in the C++ framework. Zooming out to have it all fit on screen makes it difficult to even see the nodes of the operations. I think this serves as a good visual example of the wins that we get from moving computational complexity into tensor dimensionality. PyHF is already starting to be used in physics publications in the high-energy physics community. What is exciting is that both theorists and experimentalists are using it. On the left, you can see a phenomenology paper that used PyHF for performing reinterpretation with the GIF below cycling through different physics models. And on the right, you can see the public note that Atlas released on the use of public full likelihoods for reproduction of results. Below that is the CERN News article headline that was published on open full likelihoods, highlighting what a dramatic change it has allowed. We'd also like to think that the uses of PyHF are not only found inside of high energy physics. 
Here we see public data from the Fermi Large Area Telescope analyzed with PyHF in a Jupyter notebook. The LAT is a high-energy gamma-ray telescope on the Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope spacecraft used to observe gamma-ray photons coming from extreme cosmological events. We can represent the photon count in the LAT as a binned model, such that after constructing a model in PyHF and performing a maximum likelihood fit, the results can be visualized with HealPy. Here we can view the resulting mapping as a two-dimensional histogram with special binning choices. While none of the PyHF core dev team works in astrophysics, we're interested to see what overlaps might exist for use of PyHF. In summary, PyHF is a statistical library that provides accelerated fitting for high-energy physics models by exploiting tensor libraries as computational backends for vectorized operations, automatic differentiation, and hardware acceleration. It uses a JSON schema to provide a flexible specification for declarative models, and through JSON patch is an enabling technology for reinterpretation of physics results. PyHF is also at the heart of the growing Pythonic ecosystem in high-energy physics, so let me plug the talks of my scikit hep and irisep colleagues, Jim and Henry, who are both giving talks this week in the High Performance Python track. Go check them out, as they're going to be great. Also, feel free to ask us any questions about scikit hep or irisep. Thank you so much for listening to my talk. Here I'll note that PyHF is a scikit hep project and that I received support from irisep to help develop it. Uh, but I've just been so excited to get to talk with you at SciPy this year, and I can say on behalf of Lucas, Jordan, and myself that we would love to get to talk with you more about PyHF. So please come talk to us, and I'm looking forward to the Q&A tomorrow. Finally, I wanted to say thank you to the SciPy conference organizers for making this conference happen at all this year and for making this conference be a success. You've done a heroic job, and I want to say thanks for giving me an opportunity to get to share our work with everyone. Hope everyone has a great rest of the conference.